day today, isn't it? Oh, my word. The sun is shining. It's supposed to be like 80 degrees today and no rain. And how many enjoyed the rain this week? Yes, it was, it was kind of relief, wasn't it? Um, we're thankful for the rain. The flowers all look beautiful. Doesn't the church just look gorgeous from the outside? Thank you to all those who worked so hard. Brother Stan worked so hard to keep those, and Sister Karen, to keep our plants a moving and growing and keep them uh, wet. <laughs> we're thankful for that. Do we have any prayer requests this morning? Sister Amy, your husband. Okay, we are looking for a miracle in that man. Sister Judy? Okay. Sure, the allergies are bad right now. My boss, oh my gosh, okay. So Sister Judy needs a touch in her body. Sister Peyton needs a touch in her body. Um, any other requests here today? Sister Amanda? Amen. Okay. I'm going to let you speak in the microphone for a minute. He, he was, he always claps his hands. He always did that. And he can clap his hands with rhythm. I can't do that still. But he would, he would clap his hands. And when I went to visit him with the girls, he said, Amanda, I, I can't bring this hand, the left hand over to touch the, the right hand. I can't clap my hands right. And I said, well, that's a lie. Straight from the pit of hell. I said, because God's like, you know, God did this. He does things right. So I got home, and I started to pray. And he called me the next day, and he said, I can clap my hands. And he's like, praise the Lord. I said, that's awesome. So this, this whole thing was an awful thing to, to have to go through. But it really is um, it's it's life-changing for him and everybody around even me like you know you have to put your faith to the test um on those things he didn't think he was going to make it through but god but god t-shirts whoever uh Mikkel's secret sister is we all want to order shirts just saying just saying <laughs> that's an amazing shirt but god um let's all stand we're going to pray we have an amazing, amazing day today. Wednesday night service was awesome. If you were not here Wednesday night, you got to get here. Wednesday night, the presence of the Lord was so strong, and uh, there was prayer afterwards for those that needed it, and God just amazingly came by and touched, and we're thankful for that. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you today. God, we are so thankful for your awesome mercy and grace today. God, we ask that you'd look down and remember every request, and we're thankful for the uh, um, things that are happening in the girl's life, um, Shayla and Jada, their dad's life. God, we're thankful for all the progress that's happening in him. God, we pray for Brother Matt today. God, you know his heart. God, and you seem to always take care of the heart first, and then you'd heal them. God, we're asking you right now, whatever Matt needs, Lord Jesus, you know. Be to him what he needs today. Remember, Sister Judy's sinuses, God, we ask that you would just dry them up, God, and cause her to be able to breathe and not cough. And remember, Sister Pate's hand, we need a healing in her hand. God, and all those that had a spoken, unspoken request today, God, we praise you, and we thank you, and we lay them at your feet. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen, amen. Praise team practice this morning was awesome, just saying. I'm just looking for, the, for us just to have a blowout today. Um, we're having a baptism, and um, we're just excited. God is moving. River North is, is growing, and we're just thankful for that today. Today's lesson... 
is a hard lesson. And it is titled uh, 70 times 7. 70 times 7. That's a lot. That's a lot. 490 times? Would that would be what is that what that is? 7 times 7 is 49? No. 490, right? 490 times. Now, sometimes it feels like I am going to God all the time. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. And every time I do go to him and I repent for what it's done, guess what he does? He forgives. And, and Peter, is anybody watching The Chosen? Nobody? Yes? Peter has the boldness to ask the Lord, how many times am I supposed to forgive them? Because common, what they were teaching at the time, was three times a day you had to forgive someone. Then I guess after three, you were out of luck. I don't know. <laughs> um, and, but Peter went to Jesus, and he said, well, Master, how many times am I supposed to forgive? Seven times? He's being generous because common is three. And so Peter's kind of like pushing it seven times. Have you ever had to forgive someone seven times in one day? I don't know if I have or not. Um, and Jesus looked at him. And Peter was kind of the bold one anyways when he came to Jesus and just outspoken. And Jesus said, no, 70 times 7. I'm sure he went, what? I, and maybe Peter didn't know how to multiply, <laughs> right? But that was a lot, 70, even 70 times in one day. Forgive someone. 70 times, that's a lot. But 70 times 7. When I think of sometimes in a day, in one day, how many times I mess up. And I think, how could I have done that again? Why, uh, I did it again, right? And, and God is so kind and merciful. Merciful. And since it's okay. The thing is, when Jesus forgives... He forgets. Sister Karen, when I forgive, I don't forget. So it's really difficult for me to sometimes really forgive because in my mind I'm thinking, did I forgive him? Because it keeps coming up. Satan wants to confuse you and make you think that you haven't forgiven them or whatever. Satan's job is to cause confusion. Anytime he can cause confusion in the mind, he's winning. Because my Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. That God will bring peace and calm. And I don't know about you, but in my family, we've had some disagreements. Anybody have disagreements in your family? And maybe some of your family still isn't talking to this day. Anybody have that? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And it might have gone back to something really stupid. Like Uncle Ernie ate the last piece of carrot cake 50 years ago on Christmas and didn't offer it to anybody else. And now there's a division in the family, and no one's talking to Uncle Ernie's side, and no one's talking to Grandma's side, and, and but that's how stupid these disagreements are usually. And maybe it was because someone was just inconsiderate and they just weren't thinking. Have your, your mind ever just been so full that you just didn't mean to be rude or didn't mean to snap and didn't mean to, man, I'm so sorry. I'm just going through a lot right now. And you're like, really? No, you do this all the time. In your mind, you're saying this. 
No, this is just your MO. This is the way you are. And I feel I have the ability or the right to be mad and hang on to that. So every time you come into the room, here he comes again. You know he's going to be rude. Right? No. We've got to learn because in us with the Holy Ghost, we have the DNA of Christ. And through him, we can do and live like he lived. And forgiving should be at the top of our list. That's why, and I know I've told you all before, that I can't stand it when Jeff and I were in a disagreement. I want him to forgive me right now. Sister Karen, I shouldn't have said that. Jeff, please forgive me. I have to be, not that I want to be the first to do that, not that I want, you know, any credit for that, but I want God to forgive me. So in order for, for me to be forgiven, I have to forgive. So Jeff, I'm sorry, and I have to be careful the way I word that because sometimes you can sound condescending when you're asking for forgiveness or you're forgiving them, you know. You don't want to do that. Lord, give me the right mind. Give me the right words. Give me the right attitude. Give me the right voice. Give me the right inflection because that can change everything, right? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, no. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. There's a difference, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be willing to forgive? I'm sorry. No. But yes! My forgiveness to you is not on how much you really mean it. Not my job. My job is to forgive you. My job is to forgive you no matter what. Because I need this relationship to be clean and clear and open. I need a straight line because you know what? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know which one of my family members is going to need prayer. I don't know if there's a grandchild that's going to be in a car accident and I'm going to need a hotline to God. I don't want anything in between because I didn't ask Jeff to forgive me for being rude. <coughs> Jesus said that I'm going to liken it to a ruler. He always had a wonderful story to relate it to, to explain it to us. And the ruler had his accountant going through those who owed him money. And the accountant found one that owed a lot. And in fact, they said in today's time, it'd probably be in the millions of dollars, is what they compared it to. Ten talents, I believe, is what the Bible says. Said that he said, throw him in jail. Sell his, sell his kids, sell his wife, put him in slavery. And that servant came to him and said, please don't do that. Please don't sell my children. It doesn't say how many children he had. I'm sure back then he had several, maybe 30 children. I don't know. Please don't do that to me. Please don't put my kids, please don't sell them. Please don't sell my wife. And it said that the ruler or the king of that time had compassion and mercy. Thank God for compassion and mercy. And he said, I'm going to forgive your all, whole, complete debt. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? I'm going to forgive you of all your debt. Go and enjoy your family. How awesome. I'm sure they said he was on his knees begging him, and all of a sudden the king says, what you've asked for, you'll receive forgiveness. Go. <coughs> then this same man who was just forgiven all, forgiven all, found someone who owed him minuscule money minuscule, said maybe a day's wages. 
minimum. And he grabbed him by the throat. Where's my money? I'm going to put you in jail until you pay this up. And everybody's looking on. The servants that he serves with are seeing this and take it back to the ruler, to the king, and told him what was going on. And the king is furious. What do you mean? I just forgave him of all. Just, just forgave him of all. And you are going to go to someone who owes minuscule and hold them in contempt and throw them in jail and, and abuse him? Said it grabbed him by the throat. <clears throat> and the king said, I'm going to give you over to the tormentors, to the one that would not let go of that debt. People today... We can't afford not to forgive. We can't afford to have our communication between us and God stunted. Um, I've got a verse here I want to read. Um, oh, I can't find it. Um, when my girls were little and they would fight. And um, I'd say, when you get older, she's going to be your best friend. You need to love her and be kind to her. And then I would, I would quote the scripture, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted and forgiving. We have to remember God has forgiven us of a great debt that we could not pay. Our sin, we could never pay. Never. We were guilty from the time we were born, it says that we were born in sin. So from the time we were little, we could not pay this debt that we owed of sin. Because the wages of sin is death. Ultimately, it's death. I couldn't, I, I couldn't pay that. My, the end of my means is death. Until Jesus came along and had mercy and compassion. And whenever you stand praying... Wherever you are, it says, whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that your Father also in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. You come up here and you're worshiping and praising, it's not going to go anywhere. If you have aught against someone here or wherever, we need to forgive. We need to be so quick to forgive that it makes your head spin. Now, Jeff has to marinate on things a little, whereas I don't. So he's got to think about things. And, but I want forgiveness now. He'll say, I'm not ready. Okay. All right. But I just want you to know I'm sorry. And I, I, I forgive you for what, you know, your part in this. I don't want anything to separate me from the love of God. It happens so easily. Sin will creep in and separate us from that love, from that it'll cause that great divide. Let me see. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. That's a wonderful promise. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So if we say, nah, I, 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 I don't uh, have any disagreements with anybody. I, it's all good. I'm, I'm like, no. If we say we have no sin, we're lying to ourselves. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, 
you are spiritual, you that are spiritual, should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself lest you be tempted. It's easy for some of us when someone who's been in and out of church, we kind of go, hmm, they're back again. Oh, they won't be here long. But that's not what the Bible says. It says that us that are spiritual should be there to uplift. Forgive them. Just forgive them. Lord, forgive me for being judgmental. Right? Lord, forgive me. Let me go and, and encourage. Let me be, let me, who's spiritual, let me help them who's having a difficult time. I don't know what's going on up here with them. You don't know the battle they're fighting in their mind. We can all look like we are Miss Holy Holy, but you don't know what's going on up here in my heart and mind. This one is something. Say to Joseph, we all know who Joseph is, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Be quick. If someone transgresses against you, be quick to forgive. If you need to write a letter today to someone in your past that you need to forgive, forgive them. Get it out. Get it over. Get it in the past. Get it under the blood. Let us then in confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We all need God's mercy and grace today. We need to be quick to forgive and quick to extend mercy and grace. You know, um, it's easy to watch those that are in the limelight, like um, Tiger Woods was is still a major icon in golf. But now when, when I think of him, I think of his transgressions and how his fall from the limelight or whatever you want to call it. And sometimes it's so easy for that transgression to overpower all the good. God, help me to be merciful and forgive because once my sin is under the blood, I don't want you picking it back up. I mean, I'm not saying his is under the blood. I don't know his life. I don't know anything about him. But I still want to have mercy and compassion for all. All. Not those who I want to pick and choose. Those that seem to be earnest. Those that seem to be apologetic. Those that seem to be that fit the status quo. No, for all. I don't want to sit in the seat of judgment at all. But sometimes it's so easy to do. It's so easy to fall into that, that category. Let us then in confidence draw near to the throne of grace. I want it, one of the songs we're singing today is the, door, the veil is torn, the doors swing wide. I see glory as I run inside to the throne room. And as you know, uh, Sister Jamie's been teaching on the tabernacle and how we've been learning about the holies of holies. And today we get to enter the holies of holies. I want to have a clean heart. I want to be able to forgive quick. I want to there be no separation today between me and God. For I will be merciful towards their iniquities, and I will remember their sin no more. That's where God is with us. He will remember our sin no more. Um just want to read a story. <clears throat> New York City at Christmas time is breathtaking. Ryan and Ashley flew from Florida to spend three days in Manhattan. It was beautiful and busy. One of their friends drove them around town. Traffic was so tightly packed they felt they could reach out the window and open the glove compartment of the car beside them. Yellow cabs and silver bumpers were everywhere. Anybody been in New York and seen the silver and seen the yellow cabs? driving. It's, it's a sea of yellow when you go through New York. It's crazy. Uh, we went with the youth group, and Jeff drove uh, the big silver eagle, 
and it is bumper to bumper trying to maneuver this huge bus downtown. It was crazy. One of the highlights of the trip was a little shopping trip to Chinatown. Ryan wanted a baseball cap, but he didn't want to pay full price. Chinatown was famous for bargaining, but Ryan wasn't exactly the bargaining kind of guy. His friend coached him on how to get the best price. They sell for high, but you offer low. They'll say no, you just walk out. Then you meet in the middle. Does anyone else like to bargain like that? Yes, no? Morgan's saying yes. Ryan gave it a shot. He walked into a shop, saw the baseball cap on the shelf, and asked how much for the Braves hat. 20 bucks. The young man says, will you take 15? The guy says, 20. Sold. <laughs> Maybe next time. Everyone wants to pay as little as possible to get as much as possible. Peter was no better off at the game than Ryan. Peter walked into the store and saw Jesus standing behind the counter. Mercy was sitting on every shelf on the counter, on the racks and on, in the windows. Mercy was everywhere. And Peter knew Jesus. He knew how much Jesus valued mercy. So rather than insult Jesus by asking to pay less for it, he offered Jesus above asking. So asking was three times. Remember we said common was three? And Peter said, I'm going to just go raise the bar and I'm going to offer seven. The rabbis down the street were selling mercy for three bucks a day. They taught, a brother sins, uh, they taught if a brother sins against you, God calls you to forgive them three times. After that, you're off the hook. But Peter knew Jesus was more merciful than most. In fact, he was more merciful than everyone. Peter opened up his wallet. Peter took out three bills, then three more, and one more for good measure. And he offered Jesus well above asking price. And Jesus said, if my brother sins against me, how many times should I forgive him? Up to seven? You want me to be merciful, Jesus? Can do. Seven times seemed merc mighty merciful to Peter, especially since the going rate was three times. Jesus took a glance at mercy all throughout the shop and replied, not seven, Peter, 70 times seven. Then Jesus told the story of the certain king. Today, we need to be reminded, sometimes we get frustrated with family, with coworkers, because they keep messing up or they keep doing this or they keep doing that. And, and it's frustrating. It is. But your heavenly father has this amazing story like, like it, the story tells, that the shelves are full of mercy and grace. And Jesus is just waiting for you to come in, Jordan, and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. And he goes, it's no problem, and he extends that mercy and grace today. I want to have a life that will make people's heads spin, that I just want you to know, Amanda, I forgive you. I know you didn't mean it, and, and it's okay. I, ju I just need to forgive you today because I want forgiveness today. So guess what? It's going to be quick and fast. Make your head spin. I want to have that kind of forgiveness and mercy for others because that's the way my father is. And that DNA in me, although we fight against it, right, and our back and the hair on the back of our neck stands up and it's like, no, not today. Well, that's where we need to turn around, and I know the grandkids will say, not today, Satan. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to say, not today, Satan. You're not going to win this because I'm forgiving them right now before I can marinate any more on it. Because sometimes the longer you marinate on something, the better that nastiness gets, right? Now, I have two son-in-laws that both love to grill. And they love to put all sorts of spices and let it marinate and get into the meat so the flavor is just amazing, right? But today, don't let that unforgiveness marinate. Don't let it overtake you and it rob you of your forgiveness, right? Don't let it rob you of your forgiveness today. Let's all stand. Seventy times seven.
Go home thinking about that. When you, just, so you need to forgive someone, say, mm, not even close. <laughs> We're not even close to 70 times 7. Bless you. Lord Jesus, we love you today. We are so in awe of your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness. God, when you forgive, you forget. And it is so far removed. God, help us when we forgive. Help us to forget. Lord, help us to, with your DNA running through us, through the Holy Ghost, God, help us to forgive and forget. Help us to be quick to have mercy towards those that fall, those that uh, chide against us, Lord. Help us today. Lord, we praise your name and we thank you, Lord. Lord, bless this service. Anoint the singing from the beginning to the end and the preaching today. Lord God, we praise you and thank you in your precious and wonderful name. Amen. Amen.